So usually one thing I, I do in any lecture I give or in any course, I would say I, I, I give. Um, I start by this general lecture that might really you think it, it has nothing to do with the course as a whole, but I usually um, like and I like this when I was a student to focus on the big picture, right? Like see how this course fits within the big picture, why we study it, how it relates to other courses we have taken. Always having this picture, in, big picture in mind uh, uh, helps you really navigate the course and understand the essence behind, well, why it's good to study this topic versus this one, uh, how this fits within your own, I would say, full stack of knowledge, right? So I always start with this lecture. Um, I'm not sure if you are the class that I taught to SH, but I don't think, right? So, so I didn't like I don't I don't think I I, I had the chance to teach you to SH. It might be in 2019. I'm not very sure. But if if some of you already took to SH with me, uh, they might have already listened to this lecture before. But it might be a good revisit after three years. Okay. So, so the bigger picture of computer engineering, wh what it is. So, and what topics people cover. How these all these courses you guys take. How it relates to each other. Uh, in front of you here, uh, what, what people usually call the full system stack. If you look into your desktop, laptop, mobile device, whatever it is, any computing system, you will find that in fact uh, it's composed of layers, uh, hardware layer, intermediate layers, and, and software, right? So, and, and, and this really relates to multiple courses you have covered. For example, uh, you have taken already a digital design course. This mainly lies in digital logic design here in this layer. If we start from the bottom, you will find that, well, the, 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 the lowest layer is really the physical design layer. If you have taken, well, a VLSI course, if you know anything related to VLSI or electronics, uh, MOSFET technology, etc., how manufacturing technology is done for, uh, uh, well, any silicon based uh, electronics, this is the physical design layer. It's it's a whole field on its own. It has its own research, uh, and you might hear in the news from like I don't know every every while that, for example, Intel versus TSMC, uh, Taiwan versus US. Everyone is rushing, and and right now, especially because of what what people call the tech shortage or that um, the chip shortage, uh, mainly because of really the shortage in the manufacturing of of well, of, of electronic devices, right, which happens in, in this physical design layer. Currently, there is only very few companies that are really controlling this whole industry. Uh, Intel, TCMC, maybe the biggest two. Okay. Um, and then going wafers, there aren't enough. Yes, well, wafers are the ones. Yeah, exactly, Beer. Thanks for, for the note. So wafers, when people say wafers, well, they are really referring to these very thin layers that transistors are kind of printed on, right? That's that's this device. Uh, sorry, that's this layer. And then the second layer is the circuit design, right? So you, you design your circuit. For example, you might have already ta taken a circuits course. Um, uh, and for example, well, from the digital design course, if you know AND or gates or like XOR gates, how they are being designed in terms of transistors, that's basically the circuit design. And then in circuit design, there is well like digital circuit design and analog circuit design based on what what you target, and then digital logic design. Uh, that's mainly the second year course that you had you have covered with Dr. Jennifer most probably in, in ECE, uh, where you study well how I compose um, uh, different well logic circuits from from the basic gates, right? And I have I have few pictures later on that I'll show you, and then from this you design your own microprocessor through data bath and control design. That's mainly covered in a microprocessor course. And then on top of this, there is a microarchitecture of your system. For example, how many cores you have in your laptop, how this is interfaced on what is the cache hierarchy, how many you might sometimes have in, in your laptop uh, a badge that is saying, well, I have an 8 megabyte L3 and uh, uh, well, how many L2, etc. Uh, and then, well, how much memory do you have in terms of DRAM? All of this is just the hardware layer, right? Then how the hardware communicates with the software, because in software there are other courses like programming courses, 2SH, 2SI, and there are operating system courses. Um, if some of you might have taken an elective course from an outside department, I don't think EC is offering an operating system course, unfortunately. But in, 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 in this course, in systems, we are going to cover some uh, real-time operating system concepts. Uh, and then applications, more like algorithms design and how to formulate the problem.
um, yeah, I guess Pierre is saying that there is C3, SH3 for operating systems. Maybe I'm, I'm not very aware of that. So it, it might seem that there is an operating systems course in, in ECE, hopefully. Uh, but anyway, that's the full system stack, how the software communicates with the hardware. That's a very important point. This happens through what people call the contract, right? If, well, you have written a program in, in, in 2SH or 2SI, you compile it, you create a binary, and then this binary gets loaded into the memory executed by the processor. How do you know that the assembly you have generated from your program and then finally the binary code machine uh, or, or machine code is being executed correctly by the hardware? Here comes this contract thing, like it's called an instruction set architecture. This is what your program is translated to and what your hardware understands, right? Uh, ISAs, well, can someone give me an example of an ISA? Do you know, for example, well, in your machine, what is the ISA used there? Any input, any idea? X86, thanks, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jarvis said X64. Yeah, well, X64 is more like a, um, it's it's not the ISA of Intel, but it's more like a variation of it. So it's, uh, well, based on the pro processor uh, register width uh, or machine width, what people call. But X86 is the right name for the Intel ISA, that's correct. Uh, for example, in your mobile phone, most likely you will have an ARM, uh, um, an instruction set ARM V9 or, or or V8 or based on well whatever you, your mobile is uh, so so ARM an instruction set and x86 from Intel maybe the most commonly um, used instruction sets recently there are some sort of an initiative for open source hardware like open source software um, and 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 there there is what people call the RISC five instruction set which is open source it has processor implementations that industry are using. So, uh, well, they're tr just trying to 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 invade um, more like the licensing business behind the instruction sets. But that's basically the contract between between both. Good. You can really put any course you have taken more or less uh, uh, in computer engineering field or computing systems field within this within this full stack, right? Uh, if we look into a journey uh, of this full stack thing in a, in a visual fashion, I would say I write a source code program, but before this, in fact, I might even need to articulate my problem by writing a certain algorithm. This is more like theory, right? It's not necessarily written in a code or a pseudo code. It might just be flow, flow chart or pure English, right? But maybe 2SI covered more of this. Um, the good news is we are also offering a new course, I guess, as of next year after 2SI for mainly algorithms um, because we were lacking behind in this. But but algorithms is a topic on its own uh, where you really articulate your problem, matching it to one algorithm or maybe invent your own algorithm without talking about coding for now. It doesn't really matter how, which language you use for coding it. It's more like trying to find an algorithmic solution for your own problem and then you code it in some sort of a programming language. Again, C, C++, Java, uh, Python, whatever it is, that's more like software development, right? And then this gets compiled using some sort of a compiler, LLVM, GCC, um, or any other compiler based on the language. And then you generate an executable. This executable runs on top of an operating system. Well, again, we can have Windows, iOS, uh, Linux, um, well, Android, which is also a Linux variation, but then gets translated into the ISA. Again, that's the contract, right? And, and it, it gets uh, translated into a machine code at the end that is understood by the hardware and executes it, right? That's the full journey of really what happens in any computing system. Good. And then taking, again, what I was saying, taking each part of this, it's it's a course or multiple courses in its own. Algorithms, for example, you can think of AI, machine learning, algorithms, software engineering, all within this box. You can think of programming and software development. I give the example of 2SH, 2SI as in this box. And then here, compiler construction, compiler optimization are usually uh, two famous courses when we cover compilers. And then operating systems, here comes operating systems. And then finally, computer architecture and organization, right? That that talks about the hardware. Um, for example, last semester you had um, 4DM as computer architecture. In second year, you had a, either computer organization course or now this is transformed into the project course. Uh, 
But then beneath the computer organization, you need really to design your own core, right? Which what we call data path or control design, right? For example, your ALU design, right? Uh, and, and this is again, well, lower level than computer architecture, sometimes covering a computer organization course. And then what I'm showing here is really the floor plan of this is this is if I recall correctly, that's the i7 chip from Intel. If you look into a core, uh, it has execution units, again, ALUs, floating point, etc. Some sort of scheduling, data caches, etc. So this is the logic that you develop for that processor. And then, well, if I take the ALU, at the end, it goes to digital logic design, right? An ALU is composed of multiple gates uh, that, for example, as your adder, right? Hopefully in one of Dr. Nicholas course, uh, 3DQ or, or, uh, or other courses, you might have touched some sort of uh, HDL where you really wrote digital design circuitry, right? Um, then finally, beneath these gates, each gate is composed, as I was saying, of different transistors, right? For example, this is a NOR gate. This is how you translate it. And then, um, well, that's the circuit design, electronics, physical design layer, right? Questions so far? I hope this clarifies really how everything is connecting together, right? Because having the big picture is, is essential really to build your understanding as an engineer, right? And then maybe it's a good exercise that you try to apply what, what I, I had a claim right now in, in, in this lecture, right? Is that if you take any computing system, it should more or less add to the same stack, no matter how different it looks in reality from a user perspective, right? Uh, and maybe it's a good exercise for you to just pick any computing system and, and then try to match in your understanding what components and then what courses you have covered in your knowledge uh, that really composes this system. Here I'm giving two examples that might really seem different in shapes, but at the end it's the same concept, which is a mobile phone and a laptop or, or desktop. If you think about this, well, I take a desktop, it's composed of an LCD screen, might be touch, might be touchless, it doesn't matter. There is a motherboard, a processor, uh, some sort of heat sinking. This is just an adding thing. You might have a, a graphics chip, which is another processor. But at the end, you have a processing unit. You have input output devices around it. Output device, as an example, can be the screen. Uh, input device can be the keyboard or the screen itself, if it's, uh, if, 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 um, if it's a touch screen, right? And in a sense, this is somehow what exactly we currently have in, in modern mobile phones, right? You have your own mobile phone, which is most likely a touch screen. So your screen works as an input and output device at the same time. Underneath it, we have what we call a system on a chip where you have that's that's more or less this this uh, small circuitry here or board where you have the CPU, the memory. Maybe you have um, some additional specialized processors, what we call ASIC processors, for example, something for connectivity, Wi-Fi connectivity. You might have GPUs. Here I'm showing the Apple Six, which was, uh, Apple ASIC, which is one of the oldest processors in, in Apple mobile phones. Uh, an example here, uh, which you find, well, there is a dual core CPU with the caches. There is also uh, a three core GPU, right? Uh, taking one of the Qualcomm Snapdragon, again, oldest chips, you will find multiple here that we have two CPUs. We have a GPU. We have a DSP processor, specialized processor for handling graphics. We have an LBDDR memory, uh, we, and then we have a specialized input output devices, right? This looks somehow different for, both from the user end and from the block diagram from this one. But at the end, if I match both to the, this full system stack, well, in fact, they behave fundamentally the same, right? Uh, one question to you is, can you think of any other example of a computing system that might be subtle a little bit? I beg the ones that are easy to, to reason about, right? Laptops, desktops, and then mobile phones. Can you think of any computing system around you that may be subtle, but at the end, it, it, it results in the same stack that we're talking about? Try, try to be more like uh, innovative here. Like uh, the, the, you might be surprised really, there are so many of these around you and maybe you don't recognize them. A fridge, probably. Fridge, thank you. Yes, well, I guess most likely what you meant is inside a fridge, there might be a computing system. Yeah, not the fridge itself, but that's 100% correct. Uh, it doesn't really to be have to be a smart fridge, right? Uh, people might have really this um, th this wrong uh, impression that unless it's a smart fridge, there is no computing element, and that's that's 100% incorrect, right? To be able to, for example, and even from old fridges like 20 years ago, 
to be able to control the thermostat of your fridge to adjust the temperature, that means you need some sort of a microcontroller, right? Uh, um, in, in, in that source, a washing machine is also really some sort of a computing system. Um, another example may be here I see uh, we were talking about cameras. Uh, yeah, modern cameras might be because uh, if they have some sort of processing, uh, Jarvis, but if they don't have any processing and they only stream, well, in fact, no, even if you stream, most cameras right now, they have small processors, at least for connectivity, if if they are, if they, they have Wi-Fi connectivity. Game consoles, definitely, they really have one of, you might be surprised, one of the most powerful processors are inside game consoles, especially GPUs. Uh, security systems, definitely, thermostats, smart thermostats, that's, that's correct. Uh, car infotainment system, Sahil, that, that's 100% correct as well. You guys had have excellent examples. Uh, your router, the one that you're using to connect right now into, into this lecture, your router is, is really an example of an embedded system. You have processors inside your router that really take the packages out of the Wi-Fi connectivity, wireless or in fact wired Ethernet connectivity and translate it and then send it, maintaining the routing table if, if you ever had a network course. And, and this would require a processor and a computing system. Oven and system bot. Yes, those, those are simple. Well, you guys, the good thing about examples you picked are they are really embedded systems even, right? This will take us as, as a bridge to our, our lecture uh, that really embedded systems are all over around you. So let's let's jump into that.